Well, I mean, I'm here, one, because um, I, I, you know, I'm a sun dancer. We want to watch E.P. It's the traditional Lakota sun dance. And when I saw Happy American Horse getting hooked, locked down to equipment and they're kicking off sun dance songs, I mean, it was pretty much like, you know, I, I knew I needed to, I needed to come. So. Uh, it, you've had interaction with police yourself while yeah. out here this month. Um, have you yourself been arrested? I've been arrested twice since I've been here. And what happens when someone who is um, a protector, what happens to a protector when they get arrested? A lot of things can happen. Um, when I was I was arrested on Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, I was one of the people that stayed underneath the teepee. And it was really Wong Khan. I, I, I counted all the people that were sitting underneath the teepee, and there were 16 of us, just like 16 teepee teepee poles of the teepee. So we were definitely, you know, Wong Khan Tonka wanted us there that day. Um, but there were people that day that got knees put into the back of their necks, and um, people that were arrested just for merely trying to leave the site, let alone us that stayed to hold down the space. What do you think about the reaction of the police during these actions? Um, can you talk about, you know, your experience with with police and and how that interaction has been for you? Um, I've had to deal with cops a lot in my life, but definitely deal having to deal with like this mob mentality with them. I haven't had to do it uh, to such a, such a serious, serious degree since I've been here. Um, I mean, like, you know, the origin of the cops is res police and to keep slaves in line, so it's just, you know, colonialism updating itself with the times. It's just pretty much all it, all it boils down to. Um, I'm definitely not one of these people that says the only good cop is a dead cop. I say that the only good cop is a cop that quits her job. You know, anybody that becomes um, conditioned and institutionalized, they can have their aha moments too and become disillusioned, but I'm definitely not going to be one of these, uh, you know, crazy naive hippies that, that go out there and, you know, literally say stupid stuff like, come join us, just put your guns down and come over to our side. And, you know, that's not the point. Um, they're not there to help us. They're on the job. They have to roll out their military-grade weaponry in order to keep it and to keep getting funding by the Department of Defense, so we have to expect that they're going to use it. Um, and there uh, there are a lot of cops that aren't comfortable with the arrest, and they've either quit their job or at the very least feel like they need to apologize to people after you know they start arresting, but for the most part, that's not the case. A lot of them just stay complacent or they're really angry and um, very feel very justified in, in doing what they do. It, the most dangerous part of getting arrested is transportation and when you're actually in jail. So, um, they've, I mean, I've seen, I, I got tackled, like, the second time I got arrested, I pretty much had a cop, like, tackle me to the ground. And it, they really busted up my knees. Um, there are other people that are getting, you know, that have been smacked with batons. There's been arms broken, um, ankles broken, legs broken. Um, we're getting maced. Uh, with these huge canisters that they look like fire extinguishers. It's not just the mace, the little canisters of mace that they keep on their holster. Um, they, at the at the raid, when they raided the camp, they shot people with, um, with uh, bean bags and uh, grenades. It's like, the, it's literal military presence. You know, we're not under martial law as a country, but we live in a fucking police state. They get hand-me-down military-grade weaponry. It's insane. Um, and the whole time that we've been out here, Indigenous Peoples Day, I literally got arrested for sitting underneath the teepee, smoking a chinupa with my grandmother, and kicking off Sundance songs. And they gave me a charge for rioting. Like, I, it's it's insane. And the, and the charges that they're giving people is not because they're actually looking to convict anybody. It's to scare people from going back out there again. So they give people felony charges for stuff that they haven't even done. And, um... You know, it's all, and it's just the immediate effect of, like, we got to get these people out of here, like, today, you know, because they've stopped construction again. And then, like, going to jail, 
we overwhelm them so much when they do mass arrests, which is part of the reason why we do jail solidarity is because it overwhelms the system. They have to spend so much money to like keep us housed there, but we don't get any food. They don't give us blankets. They don't give us mattresses. Um, they strip search people. Um, sometimes even to the point of like doing like squatting coughs. Um, Wharton County has set up dog kennels for people now because they don't have any room at their jail. Last time I got arrested in Warren County, they had like Department of Corrections officers from the prisons were running the jail, and they're not sending in female cops to the female cell blocks. They're sending in six foot tall, 200 pound plus men in groups coming into the cell block. Uh, it's super scary, you know. Um, but the second time I got arrested was probably was the worst was the worst experience. Uh, it, I mean, the first time it really sucked. Um, and especially it was super humbling, like going to, you know, going to court for my first court appearance with shack, like literally shackled. And it was literally because I prayed with the Chinooka underneath the TP um, on a, con a construction site on stolen land on Indigenous People's Day. It was just like, wow. It was so poignant, you know. Do you have any clothing, closing uh, thoughts? Yeah, people that come here and think that we're here to protest just either need to come here and humble themselves or they need to not come, straight up. Because I've gone to actions multiple times where it's people um, that don't understand what's going on. It's put people in unsafe circumstances. It's put themselves in danger. And um, that's why, yet again, that's why we have like direct action trainings. And we have a lot of good people. I'm just one person. It's not like I'm leading the trainings or anything. It's just something that I've done since I've been here has helped out with trainings and I've been out on the front lines since I've gotten here and yes I've done things in other places but I can tell you being here um, and actually getting people to show up every day and to stay at camp and literally drop everything else that they're doing with their lives to dedicate or living lives of like dedication being here as opposed to like being obligated um, that only reason why that's happened in part is because we're in ceremony here. This is literally a way of life for us, for people that live traditionally and that we're fighting for the land and we're fighting for sacred land.